My role at Manchester United is the stadium announcer, which is the guy who speaks on the mic before the game starts. Um, if anything needs to be announced during the game, i.e. goals or substitutions, uh, half-time activities, and obviously, you know, we have final wrap at the end of the game. Hopefully, when Manchester United have won, we're celebrating. So, I'm the stadium announcer, or sometimes referred to as the PA announcer. Yeah, that's right. That's something that United have been involved in for, for many years. There's a special number uh, that you can call or a special number that you can text. And it's something that United have sort of led the way uh, with for a number of years. They also do it at Wembley as well, where I work. Um, there's a special number that we have to give out because I do a lot of the PA announcements throughout the stadium whenever there's an event at Wembley. And that's quite high on their list as well. So uh, the FA and Wembley take a big lead on that as well. I think it's how we determine racism first and foremost, you know, and, and how we look at each category because I think racism is in football, um, but I do think in the UK, particularly England, we've tried to deal with it in a professional manner, we've tried to deal with it as and when, you know, if you go back over the years and you see the, the sort of trail of racism and the sort of, the, the lineage of, of how it's been involved in football then I think that the authorities have tried very hard to deal with it you know you've got organizations like kick it out who've uh, tried to sort of impose um, a guideline with sort of you know anti-racism campaigns um, but I do think there's a small minority who still carry it forward and, and I think that's something that will always be very difficult to sort of wipe out you know we can see the impact of racism in Europe as a whole you know particularly in Eastern Europe where it's um, Oh, sort of big scale uh, and there's a lot of uh, sort of racism whether it be from the terraces uh, or just within minor groups so I think it's going to be very difficult as a whole to wipe out racism but I do think in English football in British football we've certainly tried to to uh, you know alleviate the, the majority of, of, of racism. I think it's going to be difficult to sort of you know, erase racism completely off the map, you know, because there'll always be the, the mindless few, the mindless idiots who will always um, create trouble and, you know, create racist chants, want of a better description. So I think it's going to be difficult, as Patrice says, I do agree with him. But I think we also have to look at it from the other scale where how do we try to eradicate racism? How do we sort of lessen the racist sort of chance, etc. And I think education plays a big part in that because, you know, we have to educate people from a young age to tell them about the rights and wrongs of anything in life, you know, whether it be racist or just the, the general rights and wrongs of growing up. So I think it does start at a young age. I think it starts with education. Um, but I do agree with Patrice. I think it's going to be very difficult to eradicate it completely. I think it's to do with the mindset, you know, particularly, you know, different elements of Europe, you know, I think um, the UK, England, it's a multicultural country now, you know, we, um, Ireland, we, we, we understand that, we accept that, we take on board that, you know, that um, on the whole everyone lives very well together, you know, the, the media will always play up the sort of small segments of um, trouble, hooliganism, racism, whatever. Um, I think Eastern Europe or Russia, to, to sort of quote you, I think that's that they're, they're way behind us at the moment, you know, because obviously I think they haven't had the massive sort of immigration situation that, say, the UK have had. You know, the Commonwealth, the the uh, the history, the legacy of the of the Commonwealth, you know. So I think uh, Russia, it, it's got a long way to go. I think it's got to, you know, look at itself, and I think it's going to be a situation that's going to take a lot of time. I think we have to start somewhere, and they're very high-profile cases that you quote there. So from that point of view, with with the punishments that are given out it's about opinion isn't it because you know 
how long do you want it to be? Do you want them to be banned for a year, for two years, six months, nine games, wherever it might be? But I think what the most important thing that we have to look at is that a statement has been made. You know, a statement has been made in those cases that you've quoted. And I think when we move on, we can look at those and learn from it, you know, and hopefully it will deter other, other incidents that shouldn't happen, you know. So I think, you know, we have to start somewhere. Um, whether or not the bans, etc., were long enough, I think it's down to opinion. Um, from my point of view, I'm happy that a statement was made, you know, uh, and that we can build on that. That's the most important thing, you know, that the actual um, authorities have dealt with it, you know, and then we can move on from that and say, hopefully it will deter other incidents from occurring. Uh, if it doesn't, then you know a landmark's been set, and we can move on from that then, and, and sort of look at that as a platform to build on um, racism, and hopefully, you know, at least you know lessen it in football and in and in British society as a whole. Well, that's always an interesting one, isn't it? Because if you're boycotting anything, who who wins? You know. Because from my point of view, um, you know, that was terrible what happened with Yaya Toure. But at, at the same time, you know, Russia's hosting the World Cup. Hopefully it's a platform for it to learn by its mistakes, i.e. by the way it, 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 it has um, a lot of racist incidents. My own personal opinion is that they shouldn't boycott it because that's, that's giving in in many ways. And I think therefore they should go there, they should hold the head high they should represent their respective countries and you know if you like that's i think stronger um the fact that they do turn up and they wear the shirt with pride and they go and represent their countries and you know make a stand in russia and i think that's the ideal platform to do it well yeah i mean those those sort of statements and the way that you know english football has its problems we all know that but i do believe hand on my heart that they try and deal with it in a professional way you know we, we, we've we already said that there will be the mindless idiots but I do think that they deal with it you know it, it's difficult when you've got situations uh, where officials are, are quoting that you know we're just trying to blow it up because of them staging the World Cup I personally think that you know they need to get their house in order we're certainly trying to get ours in order it's, you know still a long way to go but at least we're, we're, we're not in denial Do you know something, in all my time of being the announcer at Manchester United, I have never ever heard a racist comment and I'm stood pit side and I'm proud to say that, you know, um, we're a club that have many, many followers from different backgrounds, different race, different religions, I think it's fantastic, you know, where I am, um, stood at the dugout on the left hand side, you have um, a group of Indian guys wearing turbans and it's absolutely fantastic. You know, they're a great bunch of guys. I talk to them. One of them's called Sparky. He travels from London for every home game. They're a bunch of characters. But, you know, they're Man United fans, first and foremost. And that's what brings us together, you know. And that's the most important thing for me, you know. Um, and again, I'm proud to say I've never heard a racist comment at Old Trafford in all the time I've ever worked there. I know they definitely wouldn't tolerate it and I know as a club um, that they were very strong in supporting Kick It Out and all the campaigns, you know, every October, you know, the Kick It Out um, badges are worn and distributed, but also um, I don't think the fans would, particularly where I stand, they certainly wouldn't put up with it, you know, so I think, um, you know, the fans would, would, would take control of it and would certainly um, ask a steward to remove a person if they heard a racist comment, I do believe that. No, I think, um, as I've already said, I think the authorities are working very hard to eradicate racism. Um, will they do it 100%? I think it's going to be very difficult. But I do think, you know, small steps are being taken and they're becoming giant leaps. You know, I think as regards uh, racism in football, it will remain there, particularly, you know, um, in Britain and in England. But I do think that the authorities are doing a, a good job and uh, you'll always have the, the few mindless idiots who... Um, We'll, we'll always be racist, whatever we try and do.